Thank you. Uh, this discussion was supposed to be given by Yaakov Amiud, who finally didn't arrive because of some uh, legitimate uh, reasons. And uh, he sent me his half-baked discussion, and I had to, to finish it. And I'm glad I did it because I learned a lot and also because I had a chance to give some constructive uh, criticism of an economist. Now, you know, there, he, he has a really nice presentation and the research question does take over. There is an emerger, shines out when, there is a, when it's most needed, the COVID area and so on. And they also say, no, for the time of COVID, we find stakeholder capitalism fails to deliver on its promise. Okay, that's, that's it. Okay. And the sample you, you got, it's about 20 months of uh, data and 116 mergers. And the findings, uh, everybody got a nice premium, shareholders uh, gained. CEOs and other directors took care of their uh, interests and the interests of uh, the community stakeholders remained, as we say, orphans. Nobody took care of them. Now, the conclusion is also, I am glad you didn't mention it, uh, because this is really for problematic in my, in my opinion, that the laws and regulation are the way to promote uh, stakeholder welfare. Uh, now, th this is an economic criticism, so uh, take, uh, take note of that. Okay? Um, in economy, as an economist, I look at this as a terminal game. Is this the ideal sample for, for, for testing stakeholders' uh, interest and stakeholderism? Marriages <coughs> require shareholder approval, direct vote. It's not something that can be circumvented. Why, why should shareholders mind about stakeholders in such a terminal game? This is, says like this sample is extremely unique and the extreme one is that you wouldn't expect, that you wouldn't expect any stakeholders, okay? Uh, are these films in distress? Even stakeholders might agree or might not expect consideration under such a, a distress situation, situation, maybe in normal times you touched on it, they, they are being taken care of, but no. So uh, look for a sample of distress films, and because you have a small sample, as you cannot do any tests or significant tests here, and you have a very small proportion of employee protection, so we cannot test any differences. We can say there was or there wasn't. It remains extremely subject to chance. And, uh, and so, uh, while the paper is convincing, as the empiricist, it's less. It's much less convincing. Now, here is the second line of attack. Uh, <laughs> I, I hope to be constructive later on, okay? <laughs> uh, it might be not optimal, okay? If you want to, the general good, the economic good, the society good, Okay, it might not be optimal for the society good uh, to, 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 to stake on the reason in such a situation, extreme situation. Why? Uh, because some elders are, ah, first, you, you know that there were some elders that were abandoned because of stake on the reason. 
Okay? There is the case of Microsoft and Yahoo in 2008, and they, they tried to, 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 to merge with Yahoo, and Yahoo put, put a, a clause in the charter that you cannot fire the workers for two, for two years. Okay? And it was abandoned, and all of us know what is the, the final okay, destination or the final <laughs> result okay, of uh, Yao. And how many, how many workers were dismissed this far, uh, because they didn't accept this offer? Okay? So many more were, were dismissed. And there is actually an a, a academic paper by uh, the same Gollum and uh, Wolfin uh, called Employment Protection and Takeover. They find reduction in takeover uh, in M&A deals following increased protection. So I'm not even sure you want protection in such situation. I'm not sure protection is not just in a quotation mark because finally more workers are laid off. Okay? So it might, as, as I say here, or as we say here, Stakeholderism may inhibit efficient downsizing that would benefit the remaining laborers. <coughs> so are we in a situation that stakeholderism helps and kind of derails efficient, efficient uh, processes? Okay. Now we, of course, have incomplete uh, picture that uh, that's, a, that's a slide I always have. Okay, how do we know that shareholders did not forego higher premiums in order to protect stakeholders? We don't know. We don't know. If, if you look at the 30% premium, I can tell you I have worked with mergers, it's, it's a typical, it's an average premium. So maybe they didn't for Maybe they did forego, maybe they didn't, okay? Now, what proportion of labor force required protection, meaning non-union? Maybe there were union workers there in, the, in those companies. They are protecting, protected against layoffs. They got their big compensation on, uh, in such a case, okay? They don't need any more protection, okay? Uh, they were just looking to be fired, okay? Uh, now, now, uh, now I have these failed offers, these failed offers that are very intriguing in my mind. Can you, it, it's more interesting, okay, why? Because if you can identify failed offers because and you can identify that they fail because of those uh, kind of reasons, that's, that's, a, that's, a great, that's a great sample or great uh, addition to, to our knowledge. Uh, is it, isn't examining failed offers a better, a better or not a better, uh, complementary at least, uh, test, okay, and and, uh, and there's also the economist or empiricist. Uh, one suggestion: if you divide your your merger into stakeholder conscious, those that kind of have have tell, have uh, protected somehow the 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 workers or the community, and non-stakeholders' non conscious deals, uh, and show what were the shareholder premiums. Okay, this is the methodology. Were they higher when they took care for, for, of their workers? Were they lower? Were they higher when the CEO got uh, 
little protection or a little monetary compensation for or severance pay or golden parachute or whatever, okay? Or where they hire, uh, <coughs> when they were. So you put the whole picture of those stakeholder conscience versus non-stakeholder conscience and you see if if others maybe pay the price as well, not only stakeholders. Um, now I cannot advance this. My car, huh? Okay. I know, I have the alternative. Uh, now, summary, US firms do not appear to protect stakeholders in a terminal situation such as MERS. Okay, that's, that's the fact. Okay, that's the established. Now, there remain all the in the picture, usually there exists some intriguing further test, uh, transferring responsibility to the government, should be minimized in general and does not fit the case of mergers, um, indeed. Uh, in my opinion, uh, could be worse. Okay, thank you. And um, do we have time? I, do, I didn't look at it. Anybody <laughs> cares to... I will give questions. Anybody have or, or you want to respond? Anybody uh, else? Can I call? Okay. Okay, just a small comment regarding uh, the no no shop clause that you said it only yeah, it only reveals more negotiation power, it also reveals less negotiation power because the, the, the target of the company that merger knows that there isn't other offers so it also reinforces the other side that it won't have to so so they didn't have it from the beginning the for for the negotiations and in the end they said okay for this we we'll give you the no show provision but therefore they were able to extract a lot of stuff for the shareholders and for the directors but they didn't use it for anybody else okay Another thing I noticed and I forgot is that in the pre-COVID period there were no, no deal that there had any stakeholder provision in it. COVID. In the pre-COVID period, you have a sample. None of the deals included the stakeholder uh, kind of uh, protection term. So the fact is that in the COVID period you had the protect some protection film, what does it mean? Yeah. <laughs> so uh for uh, 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 thank you uh Benny for this uh in your kind way devastating COVID. <laughs> 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 <Just imagine. laughs> <laughs> but uh some <laughs> So let me say uh, uh, why we are not uh, why we are not in the community. So one uh, about the terminal period. You see, like some of those things you know, uh, in this long paper that our tend to respond. But about the final period, at the minimum. We showed that the certain hypothesis that was important in both economic and corporate governance, the Schleifer and Summers hypothesis, is not a great credit. So Schleifer and Summers say uh, corporate leaders have implicit promises. It's not, uh, and people count on that, and therefore they invest in exactly. And both Schleifer and Summers, then many people building on them say, this is the reason why managers would have power in takeovers, to block takeovers, because that would be the way for them to fulfill their implicit promises and therefore ex ante to induce investment by employees and others. And what we are showing is 
that however appealing and interesting this implicit promises hypothesis is, it doesn't happen in reality. Second, you say, and we completely agree, that there might be lots of uh, situations where the efficient thing is not to protect employees from layoffs. Maybe the efficient thing is to cut the employee labor force by 30%. We completely agree. The only thing that we are saying is that if you are a stakeholder and you are having a transaction that creates a surplus, you might want to divide the surplus in a way that also the employees get. So if it's efficient to have the employees fired, then, and, uh, and then you give them at least some monetary severance payments uh, uh, in return for maybe a slightly smaller premium, but you will have this pie that is being created by definition being shared more including in a more inclusive way. And the last comment about your uh, hypothesis that maybe we didn't have, uh, if we continue just the issue about the issues, maybe the employees were unionized. In the US, as you might know, very small fraction of um, the labor force is unionized. And in this case, we kind of document using the media observations that people were expecting substantial levels. Uh, uh, and that you could still come back and say maybe people had severance agreements in their arrangements. Uh, but what we find is that there is nothing that they negotiate beyond which is directly against the Schleifer Science hypothesis because they say it's valuable to have implicit promise because sometimes you might be exposed to supplement the existing contracts. And what we find is that this is not happening. But thank you very much for your kindness, not to stay with you. Thank you, Lucien. Lucien and now, well, classmates. Uh, okay. Uh, once. Um. But there's not, no problem in your papers that more data cannot solve. Many people react because you know the standard methodology is you do a t test or you do a regression. Now here what we find, and this was the same thing in our earlier paper, is we find we come to the center, and if you want to use the language of there is an hypothesis, which is the stakeholder is an hypothesis, or let's say the Schleifer Summers hypothesis. It says the corporate leaders, when they come to sell the firm, there is this big surplus, there is this big mana. The hypothesis is that they will remember the people who worked hard in the uh, basement for 20 years and they will give them part of the pie. So you can say the hypothesis is that we will find a significant, substantial incidence of protections. Now we come and we find zero, none. Zilch, nothing. Now, what else would you like us to find to be able to want to say to say, look, we are rejecting the hypothesis, you want to say it formally, but I don't see that there is a very to it. Uh, if I, the hypothesis is the shy for some is that you will find a substantial incidence, we find zero. Now we have a problem. If we found 12%, we would say, maybe 12% say something, but we are finding Zero, nothing. What do you want us to find more? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to invite Maria Sunta. Thank you for the next